Hey, welcome back everybody. Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, the most popular clamp on Amazon today. The all new Astro AI DT202 for your cheapo pleasure. DT202 from Astro AI shipped from Amazon for a meager 20 bucks Canadian, about 15 US. Oh, that is cheap for a clamp. Now take note, this is an AC clamp only. It doesn't do DC amps, so that might turn a few people off. But hey, if you're just looking for a basic AC clamp, stay tubed. What else do we have? Well, we have those cheapo Astro AI test leads. Take a look at those in a minute. And we have a wonderful little thank you from Astro AI saying thanks for uh, spending your 20 bucks on me. We have a QR code over here so you can get more detail. And of course we have our little flip out doozy, uh, what you might call it, manual here. Just a piece of paper really, but gives you the lowdown, the specs. Um, it's a basic clamp once again, so not too much going on in terms of reading. Hey, by the way, it ships in a pretty decent little box from Astro AI. Have that black, a lot of black going on in 2023 for a multimeters in terms of packaging. There you go. Voltage, resistance, current, diode, continuity. Yes, right across the board. Test leads a little on the cheesy side. We do have some good strain relief, but man, they are light. They're very plasticky and, ah, uh, you know. Not the best out there. Anyway, let's try continuity and just see how good or bad they are. One thing slightly different with this clamp is the fact the inputs are not on the bottom like many of them. No, they're here on the top. Also, they're not color coded. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Color coding really should be there. Okay, sticking them in. Now that being said, they're in there pretty tight. They're not gonna go anywhere. Get into continuity, put it on the diode continuity symbol, hit the select switch. And there you go, there we are. Default test leads, three, two, one. Oh, oh, oh. It is slow, latched. Yeah. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Still slow, tad faster, but yeah. even with a really good set of test leads like this, Still pretty lame. Might be slow, but it's definitely loud coming in at 82.1 decibels. Maximum output volume and continuity. I'm gonna leave those Pro Masters in while we take a look at the diode LED test. Here we go. Standard diode. And we have that forward voltage drop, 0.525 volts. Now let's try those LEDs. And by the way, we have no audible output in diode okay, let's mode. Let's try those LEDs now. Starting off with the red LED, nada. The yellow, nothing. The green, oh, this is definitely not good. Finally, the white, nothing. What is going on? That, oh man, we are O oh for five in both illumination and forward voltage drop. That just, ugh, that's really bad, really bad. Output voltage in diode mode is a very measly 1.6 volts. That definitely, my friends, is not very good. Clamp jaw opening's not, the biggest not. and you really gotta squeeze that trigger to get it open. But there we are, that's max right there. And we're looking at 26 millimeters, so Ah, pretty small in terms of a jaw opening. If we compare that to, let's say, the Venlab, look at the difference here. Almost 60 millimeter opening with the Venlab jaws, so, ah. So in the DC accuracy range, volt-wise, we have a plus or minus 0.5% and three digits. Let's try it out. And with our five volt calibration standard, 5.00 volts. What do you know? At least it's accurate. And 10 volts, 10.01, still in spec. Little side-by-side -side comparison, test lead on the left, about 30 years old, one on the right is from the Astro AI. But man, don't they look a little bit identical? Something similar. 
That being said, the old one has nice silicone. The new, well, just your standard PV PVC. And that, my friends, is progress. And here we go, 120 volts AC. Now remember, this clamp does not do true RMS, but you know, for standard household mains, that's usually not a problem. That display is only three and a half digit, 2000 counts, so it gets just the basics. Selector switch isn't bad. Once again, it's a little hard on the thumb when you're moving it, um, and it does take a bit of force, but that's not a bad thing. It does not get lost between ranges, uh, so that's a bonus. But uh, generally speaking, not too shabby. And as well, no backlight on this display. Ugh, just doesn't get any better, does it? Okay, let's take a look now at resistance. This goes up to 20 mega ohms only. So, yeah, well, what can I say? Here we go. Resistance accuracy is pretty good. Just fluttering between 99.9 .9 and 100 ohm. Make me a liar. There we go. Only goes up to 20 mega ohm, like I said, and that's not so great. Here's a 22 mega ohm resistor, and look at that. Yeah, it cannot read it. Uh, 0.5 of an ohm, problematic for many meters. Well, all being said, 0.6 of an ohm. Considering it's not bad. There we are, 0.5, and back to 0.6. So eh, it's in the ballpark. Okay, quick look at AC current right now. I have a blow dryer and we're gonna turn it on and check out the current draw. Here we go. Let's start on low, shall we? I've got it hooked up to a splitter. And it just turned off. Gotta love it when that happens. Okay, hooked up to the splitter right now. And here we go, low power. Coming in around 6.3 amps. And high power about 11.7. Alrighty, let's compare that to the other two clamps. 6.0 coming in for the Unity on low. And high we've got 11. Point zero. And finally, the standwalk clamp. Let's start off in low. Coming in at a 5.9, just a little bit lower than the other two. And on high, 10.0. Seven amps. So here's our readings, 10.99, almost 11 amps for the Unity, 10.8 for the Sanwa, and 11.6, pretty high for the El Cheapo Astro AI. Well, you know what? I'm gonna go with the Unity and the Sanwa in this case, because I know it's definitely not 11.6 amps. Added one more clamp to the equation and look at that, 10.99 spot on with the Unity. And this is NL freaking cheapo. I think I paid like 10 bucks for that. So man, oh man. So unfortunately the worst showing the loser in this little contest for AC current draw was the Astro AI. Uh... Oh, just keeps getting better, doesn't it? DT202 is powered by a couple of AAA batteries. It has this kind of funky, wonky, weird little uh, battery housing thingy. It's kind of bizarre, but yeah, that's that's how it holds the batteries. It just pulls out like that, and there you go. Anyway, um, all right, let's take a look at the inside. No shielding or anything funky going on. Hey, that's par for the course. All right, down and dirty. So closer look on the inside, here are the input jacks, split variety. Uh, looks like it's been hand soldered and kind of weird because you have this black out here uh, that is sort of protruding into the PCB. So, eh, all right, whatever. Battery contacts over here are a little oscillator. Main IC is cobbed 
and uh, not much. We have one, one little PTC over here. A weird mix. Um, yeah. We have some sh heat shrink going on uh, for the jaws. Um, but, you know, once again, it's just really... Yeah, it's, it's on the cheap side. This is really poor quality gauge wire. And I'm telling you that soldering is in there just barely. Uh, inspected by number nine. Okay, we're going to have to talk. You can also see the clip for the clamp jaw itself. Uh, metal ring, which is nice. But once again, it's on a plastic overlay. And that can easily crack. Uh, you know, this has happened to me before in cold weather uh, outside here in Canada. You know, that makes this plastic not so great uh, in terms of reinforcement in the cold and bada boom bada bing snap crack pop and you're now without a clamp so not a big fan of the plastic overlays but anyway there you go other than that you know your standard foray into the world of cheapo clamps uh yeah okay gonna put it back together come back with my closing thoughts closing thoughts on the astro ai clamp meter well i think you know what i'm gonna say and, oh yeah, pass this turd by. And hold your nose while you're passing it because this one really stinks. Oopsie, forgot to mention it comes with a carrying strap and a case. Good thing, that way we can hide it from other people. Honestly, I don't know what Astro AI was thinking. I don't care how cheap this clamp is. This is like one of the worst I've ever reviewed. Man, oh man, the worst LED result ever. A zero for five. This is unforgivable. Crappy little LCD 2000 cap display that's hard to read, susceptible to glare, no backlight, poor AC current accuracy, small clamp opening, DC amps only not true. I'm not even going to continue. I mean, just face it. You saw the review. At least I hope you did. It is not worth 20 bucks Canadian, $15 US. It's not worth much at all. In fact, it's not worth anything in my books. Plenty of better clamps out there in the cheap realm as well that do a heck of a lot more and a better bang all around. The Astro AI DT202 gets an unqualifyingly sad one out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Man, oh man, I don't know how this thing ever got to be so popular on Amazon. What is wrong with some people? Oh. Anyway, looking forward to December. It's gonna be a hot month on the channel. I'm telling you, we have got some of the best names in the biz, including Ronan Schwartz, Owan, and the list continues. Man, it's gonna be a fun, fun month. Hey, till the next one, keep on testing. Ah, uh, even with these really good meter, uh -huh. Side by side here, the test lead on the left is about 30 years old. This one is the Astro AI. Oh my god.